Hey Gemini, welcome to your tarot session. Thank you so much for joining me today. Gemini, there are no dates on the readings of this time. I trust that whenever you found this video, it was meant to be. And that's it. Let's just dive right into this reading and make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for showing up in the last Gemini reading. Let's see what is present right now. What is the general energy in this moment as Gemini is watching? Judgment, okay. This is a big time for you. It's a big time for everyone. Energetically, astrologically, we are in the astrological new year right now. And with the judgment card, there's a lot coming up. A lot from the past. It could be major revelation, something personal that you're figuring out about yourself. But also, I think it could be something showing up from the past and confirming something for you. Not that it will necessarily change the direction you are on or completely change your mind, but I feel like it will give you the clarity that you need. Um, there's a lot coming up right now. Uh, it, it feels like I'm connecting with something that was taken away from you or it never was what it could have been. So there was a loss here. You accepted that something just wasn't meant to be or it, it was delayed in a way, but it wasn't denied. It was, it was delayed, but it wasn't denied, okay? And especially that with this Mercury retrograde, you are, Gemini, ruled by the planet Mercury. So right now, it, it feels sticky for you. It really feels sticky. It's like, okay, am I going backwards? Am I stuck? I need clarity to move on. I need... I need a sign. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to say. This is what wants to come through. Someone has been asking for a sign. Okay, this might be it. We have the Temperance, Two of Swords, and Three of Swords. There's a lot of hurt connected to that loss. Again, you accepting that something wasn't meant to be. And I feel like when I say that, Spirit is like, no, no, no. It was meant to be. But it was delayed. Okay. So with the temperance card here, this is a very lucky energy connected to the planet Jupiter, connected to Sagittarius. It moves fast. It's exciting. It makes sense finally. It's not easy. It's not a soft energy per se, but it is bringing so much clarity. And with the three and two of swords, it's like, okay, I'm finally able to take the sword out of the heart. Having a conversation that means something, finally addressing certain things that were just up in the air, questions that were unanswered, things that were left unsaid. And I'm seeing the six of swords in my mind. It's like when this situation happened, a part of you felt like it took away some of your value or it played with your heart in a way that you really ask yourself, like, what is wrong with me? And there's nothing wrong with you. That's not the question. Nothing is wrong with you, Gemini. Again, I feel like the question is, what was I supposed to learn from this experience? What did I learn from this experience, from this delay? Not getting what I want and actually getting what I needed the most, which is a little bit of time to reflect. Doing some introspection. This is what you've been doing. Digging very deep inside of yourself and asking the right questions. So with the Two of Swords, <sighs> there's something that you are mastering now. And I think it's connected to your mind. 
decluttering the mind or knowing when your ego is talking and when the soul is talking and being able to differentiate the two. This is something that you're learning to master right now because again, when you didn't get what you want, it made space for what you truly needed, but still it was painful. We're not trying to diminish or we're not trying to sugarcoat what was so real and so raw and painful, but there's definitely a shift in perspective here when it comes to, again, not getting what you wanted, but actually getting what you needed. Okay, there's a lot coming through. Gemini, that was that was intense. That was intense. What you've been through, for some reason I feel like it's secret. Not a lot of people know about it. Only the ones that are concerned. There was an inner battle here. Should I talk about this? Should I... Ask for advice and it feels like you decide to not listen to any advice but your own and I like that. Whew, that's a lot. Okay, we have yeah, the tower. This is a this is what I felt. I felt like I was short of breath. I felt like there was this intense energy running through me. And with the tower here, this is a confirmation that everything non-essential has been cleared out of your life. The tower is always a gift, always. And sometimes we feel like it's happening to us. A lot of people fear this card. I don't, I don't think any cards should be feared. The tarot is never a warning. The tarot is not here to scare you. It's here to support you. It's here to validate how we feel. It's a reflection of what's happening in the present moment. This is what the tarot does. Especially cards like the tower card. It helps you see what is present so you can set yourself up for the best aligned future. So by understanding, by this card validating what happened, it's starting to make more sense. Like, okay, the universe was on my side. Everything that was non-essential was cleared out of my energy. And there's a lot of things that are non-essential that we still care about, that we are attached to. So it's not easy. It really isn't easy to go through a tower moment. But when we are able to take a step back, to have a 360 vision of this situation, everything started to make sense. We can connect the dots. Because at first, all we can see is black or white, good or bad, light, darkness. And then again, when we take a step back, we have a 360 vision of what happened. At the heart of this reading, we have the 10 of cups and we have the five of pentacles right here. The body holds the count. That's why you might be feeling extra tired right now. You're like, okay, things have been cleared out. I know what happened. I understand certain things now. The band-aid has been ripped off. So why is it still feeling so heavy? Because again, the body holds the count. You're going to have to give yourself the time to recharge. And... Rest, recharging, play, sweetness, all of those things. It sounds very easy and cute when we're like, okay, time, time to make fun for, time to make space, sorry for fun and play. And it's time to recharge. It's time to take a break. But when the mind is fighting against us, when the mind and the ego is saying, oh no, you don't deserve a break. There's so much that you have to do. Taking a break is wasting your time. Our ego, our nervous systems are so used to us grinding, keeping ourselves busy so we don't look at our problems. We don't, you know, we don't listen. We don't tend to what is present. Uh, the mind is a time traveler. 
It really is. The mind loves to obsess over the past. It loves to try to predict the future. The ego also is a time traveler. But when we are focused on the present moment, there is a battle happening between the mind and the body. It's so uncomfortable. And I don't know if you've ever tried meditation. Um, I've talked about this before. I meditate every day, but it's not easy. It's something that's very uncomfortable. Some days my mind, my body is literally fighting. I get angry at myself. I'm like, how is it possible that I'm not able to sit for five minutes? Because again, the mind and the body are fighting. There's something here that it wants to be explored with the Ten of Cups. It's something that you might have been pushing away for a while because you're like, it's not that important. I'm not there yet. I don't want to dig deep. I don't want to look at those things. I don't want the past to come back because I don't want to deal with those things. But your body, your soul is craving that deep dive needing to address certain things. Again, the band-aid was ripped off. The swords were taken out of the heart, but now there's a wound that needs tending. And again, I feel like this battle, like, okay, I need to rest. I need to take care of myself, but it's so uncomfortable. I don't want to do that. I have a mission. I have a goal. I want to grind. I want to work. But when is it too much, Gemini? When is it too much? Let's dive deeper. I feel like I have to ask for a sign. And I keep thinking about a white dove. I see it on the traditional image of the Ace of Cups. There's a dove. Why am I seeing a dove for Gemini? Why am I seeing a dove? Three cards. Why am I seeing a dove? And the King of Wands is here. We have the Three of Pentacles, the King of Cups, and the King of Wands. Three of Pentacles is a card of work and progress. So it feels like when you are dealing with a bump in the road, where when you have something coming up from the past and you're having to deal with it, you feel like it is an ending. It's the end of the road. I have to start all over again. What's the point? This is a big question I'm getting um, this week from Virgo, which is also ruled by Mercury, just like you. Like, what's the point anyway? What's the point of this? Why do I feel like I'm wasting my time? And you're not. This is work in progress. And the moment you realize that it isn't about the destination, but the journey, everything shifts for you. And here we have two kings. You are in king energy already. But the kings in the tarot are still making mistakes. They're not perfect. I feel like people have this vision of the kings in the tarot like they know it all. And that nothing is ever going to get in the way of their success. Kings practice what they preach. Practice. The word practice is very important. When we practice something, whatever it is. We have to make mistakes in order to get good, in order to learn and get better. And that's the thing here. We have fire and water working together. Fire and water don't cancel each other. They work together. I always think about the cauldron of a witch, you know, uh, something boiling, something brewing in there. Water, a little bit of vulnerability, fire, what you're passionate about, uh, all of the intense feelings. There's something that 
when it all adds up, when you give it the time to brew, to flourish, to expand, it becomes something greater than you. It becomes something so big and so powerful that, again, it shifts your perspective. It completely shifts how you see a certain situation, why it happened. Again, I said it earlier, it's like you're getting the answers. Why did this happen? Why did I have to meet this person or why did it never expand it in the way I wanted to? Because again, there's something that feels like it was taken away from you or it never expanded in the way that you hoped for. So when we are focused on a specific goal, on a specific wish, and we put all our energy, all our love, attention into this one wish... That's called manifesting, um, making something real out of the possibilities. That's manifesting. And when we don't get what we want instantly, we feel like something is wrong with us. The universe is not on my side. My guides are not hearing me. I don't know how to manifest. I'm not as powerful or intuitive as I thought I was. The brain gets in the way. But when we deal with manifestation, when we work with magic, really, waiting for a result, waiting for clear result is never the answer. This is not how it works. Spirit is inviting you again to focus on this journey. Because you might believe that there is this one goal, this one wish But on the road to get there, there are so many shifts, so many new beginnings, doors that are opening that you didn't even know existed. That's the thing. With the King of Wands, there's magic here. The power of your will. It's very connected to the magician, in my opinion. And the magician is you in the tarot. It is the card that's ruled by Mercury. So there's something here, Um, the emotional king of cups and the creative king of wands, the power of the two, it's beautiful, but it needs to be grounded in the physical reality for us to get value from it. So I would say embodying the king of pentacles All the pentacle cards, five, three here, are very important because, again, I'm going to repeat myself, but it's very important for someone. The emotional and creative power, we need to ground it in the physical in order to get value from it. So manifesting things, even if we're so invested emotionally, passionately, spiritually, it's not enough. We need to connect with our bodies. We need to focus on what is present, again, to bring back the energy into the physical reality in order to get value from our manifestations. So it's not just hope, pray, say out loud what you want, you know, I feel like we need to expand our vision on manifestation. It's not just about wishing for something. It's about anchoring it in the reality in order to find value from it. Okay. I want to know what happens. What happens when Gemini is... Coming back to their bodies and making something happen in the physical world. How is this manifestation? (laughs) The magician card, of course, you. How is this manifestation showing up in the real world? And magician is here. So it's it's through you. It's through you. 
and we have the two of swords again. You're going to have to make this a practice, Gemini. I think that spirit is testing your dedication. How dedicated are you to a certain wish, a certain goal? Are you making time for it in your schedule? You know, when I say we want to ground the energy, it can be connected to our schedule. It can be connected to... When we wake up in the morning, how do we hydrate ourselves? How do we sleep? Again, your vessel, your body, it needs to be in check in order to be ready for this new beginning. And there's an idea that you have. And it's been expanding. The Two of Swords is here two times. Two of Swords is the first sprout of the seed that you planted, this idea that you have. It is already flourishing and expanding. It exists in the world. It exists outside of you. And you don't need to fight this energy. You're dancing with the energy. It's everything that you do, every time you interact with someone Every time you do something that feels mundane, that feels random, like, okay, this is not connected to my goal, so who cares? It's not that important. There is no disconnect, Gemini. There is no disconnect between all the things you do on the day-to-day, -day, your nine-to-five, the mundane. Literally, even when you clean your house, there's no disconnect between that and your goal. There's no disconnect between the mundane and the spiritual life. It's all connected. So what I'm seeing here in my mind is it's like, a, you know, an electric plug just finally fitting into the wall. It's like this is the image I'm getting. Like, okay, I've been trying to... work with this energy in a certain way and now that I'm just letting it go letting it flourish as it wants and I'm redirecting the energy towards myself I'm getting the time to recharge I'm taking care of my body I'm listening to my body making sure that my routine that my schedule is aligned with my values is aligned with what I want for myself again the plug is like finally getting in and it feels good and you're noticing the shift right away again tower is no joke and i love seeing the tower in readings i used to be scared of this card and after experiencing it so many times after teaching it and living the tarot really because this is what i do i live the tarot every day um the tower has become such an ally and I know that when it comes up in someone's reading, because it doesn't come up as often as we think it, it, it does. Um, when it comes up, I know that you're getting that push, that extra help from the universe. It accelerates so much. It helps the process. It's like the universe is ripping off the band-aid for you. You don't even have the time to notice how painful it is. You don't even have the time to, you know, overthink it. The tower is bitter medicine, but it is medicine. You know, think about, you know, in, in Quebec, we have sirop lambert. It's like, uh, it's like the worst tasting shit I've, you know, ever tasted in my life. But it will heal you right away. Certain potions, certain elixir, it doesn't taste good. It's bitter. It's like, ugh, I don't want to be uncomfortable and drink that potion. But once it's done I, and I start feeling better, I forget about how bitter it was. So this is what I'm saying here. The tower stings, but it's not permanent. And it helps us see a 360 vision of everything, what was, what is, and what could be. Okay, let's pick some Oracle card. Gemini. Okay, one Oracle card and one Tarot card. Okay, Gemini. Hmm. 
one tarot card, Gemini. I'm hearing promotion. So for whoever's watching still, if you're still listening, Gemini, there's something about a promotion. If this is something that you asked, an energetical graduation doesn't have to be a promotion at work. It could be, but it's like you feel promoted by the universe and it's like the tower is giving you that promotion. If you are someone who reads the tarot, who loves the tarot, I would highly suggest that you take the tower card out of your deck. If you don't have a deck, find it on Pinterest, put it somewhere on your altar, your cell phone, your fridge, and it is time, I think, to befriend the tower. It's time to drink that bitter medicine and stop being a baby about it. And by the way, I have my Venus in Gemini, okay? I connect with you guys. I connect with the messages. I'm not here pointing fingers. This works as a mirror for me too. So I will be doing my work with the Tower card. Um, and if anyone is interested, I have, uh, I think, a lesson, a video lesson that I created on the Tower. Um, I'd be... I'd be very happy to send it to you as a gift um, if this is something you're interested in. So I'll keep the comments open for this reading, Gemini, if there's anything you want to express. Um, I think that, you know, as a tarot teacher, I'm always feeling invited to share some of my teachings with whoever connects. But it's like I can't take my eyes off the tower and there's something here for you about it. Okay, we have Cosmic Emperor. I love it. Allow yourself to take up more space in the world. And we have the Temperance card again. So the last card of this reading is also the first card. They're the same. So Something that you see as this huge thing, this huge mountain is actually so much easier to overcome than you think. There's this full circle moment and with the Ten of Cups here, it's like, okay, it was so much easier than what I thought it would be. Drinking that bitter medicine, ripping off the band-aid, taking the sword out of, out of the heart. And that's because you are brave enough to face those things. It takes so much courage to face the Three of Swords and the Tower and all of those things. Five of Pentacles. Those are contractions. They are uncomfortable. But the universe is on your side. Your guides are on your side. And folks around you, people that you care about, your clients, your family, your friends, your neighbor, there are people here for you, Gemini. And I think that, again, this bigger message that I'm getting is look right in front of you. Look at what is present here. Because your mind is obsessing over what happened in the past or what could be. So you're draining your energy for people and things that aren't present right here in this moment. So how you've been directing your energy again, it's like it's hitting a mirror and it's coming right back to you. And you're able to see something within yourself. You're able to unlock a certain door. Again, five of pentacles here, the card of the vessel, our bodies. It's so easy to judge our bodies we put them through so much pain, sometimes for beauty, sometimes for, you know, a bunch of different things. And the body holds the count. Now it wants softness. It wants something sweet. It wants tending. So cosmic emperor, dare embody and thrive. So of course I'm thinking about the emperor and the tarot, which invites us into taking up more space in the world. This is me. I am vulnerable. I am open. I am this and that. Again, I think that calling in things as manifestation is not necessarily what's best right now. I want this in the future, or I want to release this. No, what are you right now? Emperor, Aries energy is I am. 
those are the types of affirmation that spirit is inviting you into. Again, creating in the physical world, in the present, grounding the energy of whatever you want. I am abundant. I am loved. I am open. I am powerful, receptive, whatever you want and being clear with those affirmations. You know, again, Gemini, you're ruled by Mercury. You are the curious sign of the zodiac. Your curiosity to look within, to ask the difficult question. This is your superpower. It will never be ordinary to be a Gemini, to explore the themes of Gemini. It's never like a chill, comfortable thing. When you are able to, again, direct the energy in the earth, in the present, it feels like you can get everything that you want. Nothing can stop you. You are unstoppable. So I'm sending love, Gemini. And this reading is a little tricky because it's so specific, but also speaks of so many important themes. So if this isn't your reading, of course, don't force it. If you watch till the end, please let me know in the comments. Please let me know if this is the sign that you needed. And again, if anyone wants more information on the tower card, I would be happy to send uh, something special, a little gift your way, Gemini. So take care and I'll talk to you guys very soon.